Aviators use all kinds of acronyms to describe how high in the air they are. You might have heard MSL, AGL, QFE, flight level, and probably some others too. What exactly do all those mean? We'll answer that question in this video on altitudes. The FAA defines a few measurements of altitude for us. The first one we'll look at is true altitude, which is the vertical distance of the aircraft above sea level. This is shown as feet above mean sea level, or MSL, so 15,000 MSL is 15,000 feet above sea level. True altitude is also the elevation shown on aeronautical charts for things like terrain, obstacles, and airports. True altitude is useful for planning purposes, but there are often situations where a pilot might want to know how high they are above the ground instead of the sea. This is called absolute altitude, and it's expressed as feet above ground level, or AGL. So why would you need to know your altitude in AGL? Knowing where you are above the sea level isn't all that useful if you're nowhere near the ocean and the terrain you're flying over is thousands of feet above the water. Imagine you're landing at an airport that is 1,750 feet above sea level and your altitude is 1,925 feet above sea level. You would need to do some extra mental math to figure out if you're at the right altitude above the airport. That's brain power that could be focused on other important tasks like landing the aircraft. But an altimeter set to show your absolute altitude in AGL could do all that for you. Unlike altimeters that use ambient air pressure, an altimeter show in AGL will typically use radar directed under the aircraft to get an accurate reading. AGL is also important for pilots that are doing aerobatics that will take them close to the ground, and military pilots that need to stay close to the surface to avoid detection. Altimeters work by measuring air pressure. The International Civil Aviation Organization has a definition for a set of conditions for the standard atmosphere, which it calls ISA for short. At ISA, the pressure at sea level is 1,013 millibars. Going up to 36,000 feet, that pressure drops to just 226 millibars. So when we talk about altitude in relation to pressure, then we are using pressure altitude. And this becomes important later on when we talk about airspeed because our airspeed instruments also rely on measured pressure. Now we know that air pressure can change from one location to the next, and it can even change throughout the day. This can affect our altimeter reading and we need to correct for it. Here's an example of how that might look. If you took off from an airfield with your altimeter set to the local pressure of 29.94 inches of mercury, and then arrived at another airfield where the pressure was 29.69, then you would be 250 feet below what your altimeter indicated. And that could have some very nasty consequences, including running into obstacles or a mid-air collision with an aircraft cleared for a different altitude. The way you compensate for these changes is with the last altitude we're going to discuss, density altitude. This is just pressure altitude corrected for variations from standard temperature. Now you might be asking, why temperature? Temperature would change what the altimeter reads since warm air is less dense than cooler air. To the altimeter, that change in density from temperature looks exactly the same as a change in altitude, and that's how it will report it. To compensate for this variance, you'll typically hear airports broadcast their current pressure levels over the radio. Pilots can then adjust their altimeters to match that local pressure. You might have also heard the terms QNH, QFE, and flight level in regards to the altimeter. The first two might look like acronyms, but they're actually brevity codes from a list known as Q codes. You don't need to worry about memorizing the list, but these two pop up enough that they're worth an explanation. QNH is just a code word to state that the following number is the setting that should be dialed into the altimeter to adjust it for sea level height. Or looking at it another way, if you dial in that QNH number while sitting on the runway, it will show the runway's height above sea level. So at an airport that's at 1,800 feet MSL, you will see 1,800 on your altimeter with this setting. QFE is a little different. Instead of putting in a pressure to align zero altitude with sea level, QFE pressure sets the zero at the airport's elevation. So while sitting on the ground at our hypothetical airport that's 1,800 feet above sea level, the altimeter would read an altitude of zero. If you're having trouble remembering the difference between QNH and QFE, then there are a couple of mnemonics that can help. Just think of the NH and QNH as nautical height, since it will show your height above sea level. 
and the FE and QFE as field elevation, since that's your altitude above the airfield. So what about flight level? How does that fit in all this? Flight level is an altitude given in multiples of 100 feet. So a flight level of 220 would be 22,000 feet. Flight levels are usually only given in numbers that are divisible by 500. So you would hear FL250 or 255, but you shouldn't ever expect to hear 253. There are a couple other things that are specific to flight levels. Whenever using flight levels, altitude will be in reference to sea level at a standard atmosphere setting. So a Q&H setting of 1013 millibars will be dialed into the altimeter. This is important because if an air traffic controller is trying to deconflict aircraft by altitude, then all the aircraft need to be using the same reference to keep from accidentally entering another plane's altitude block. So when do we use flight level instead of feet? This depends on where you are in the world, but in the US and Canada, pilots switch to flight levels at 18,000 feet. This altitude is known as the transition altitude and it varies by region based on local rules. So below the transition altitude, a pilot might hear a radio call to climb to 8,000. But above that altitude, that radio call might sound like flight level 280. So far, we covered how the aviation community talks about altitude, including true altitude, which is altitude above mean sea level, absolute altitude, or an aircraft's height above ground level, pressure altitude, which is our altitude as measured by international standard atmosphere, and density altitude, which is pressure altitude corrected for temperature differences. We also went over how QFE, QNH, and flight level were variations of these altitudes. Understanding altitude and the definitions used by pilots will help you in understanding other aviation concepts. I hope you found this explanation useful, and if you're interested in other aviation topics, then check out the video that should pop up next.